大家好，欢迎来到文美集团美国升学直通车。文美集团美国升学直通车是华人网和文美教育集团联合制作播出的北美首档大型的网络直播教育节目。在我们的节目当中，你将会了解到最新最权威的教育资讯，还有升学的建议。无论是学生还是家长，有任何的美国升学教育问题，都可以直接来给我们留言。首先来给大家介绍一下文美集团。文美集团是美国著名的大学申请及规划辅导机构。二十年规划经验，在美国洛杉矶、纽约、芝加哥等十二个城市设有服务中心，为广大华人子女提供教育服务。文美集团专注于美国大学升学规划服务，教育学博士加常春藤名校面试官顾问团队，中美双顾问模式，为六到十二年级学生提供最好、最全方位的教育服务。欢迎大家扫码或者是直接搜索关注文美集团的微信公众号“美国文美”，及时了解最新最全的美国升学资讯。如果想跟文美的客服互动，请在节目播出期间扫描屏幕左下角的文美客服二维码，或者直接搜索微信号“文美集团”的全拼音添加。文美的咨询热线是幺八八八七八九零九四二。下面我们请皮埃尔先生来给大家分享哈，到底是呃招生官喜欢哪五类的课外活动？Hi everyone, I'm Pierre Rodriguez for Winmay. Today's topic is what extracurricular activities admissions officers look for. But before we do that, I'd like to go into what are some things that you should consider in crafting your activities list. What are things that they're going to be looking for? Factors specifically. So we're going to start by talking about depth over breadth. So what does that mean? Admissions officers prefer students who show a deep commitment to a few activities, rather than superficial involvement in many. This demonstration is of passion, dedication, and the ability to make a significant impact. So,、uh, what we call that is a spike. So you want to have something that stands out among everybody else. So, whether that's some competition, like if you made it to. The international level for an international mathematical Olympiad, so that would be a spike, and that's what sets you apart from everybody else. So, contrary to popular belief about being well-rounded, although important, what's going to make you more noticeable to admissions officers is that you have a spike. In other words, you have one specific thing that is your strongest point. And that's what's going to help make you unique amongst everybody else. So that's what the first point talks about. The second point is leadership and initiative. So you want to look for opportunities where you can take on leadership roles or start new initiatives. This could be starting a club, leading a community service project, or taking on a significant existing role in an organization. So we talk to students all the time about attending a leadership program, for example, through Win May. We talk to students about starting their own club, and we also talk to students about trying to have an officer position in the clubs that they're participating in. This is an important skill that they look for because leadership, as you know, involves planning, involves using resources, and thinking about how everything comes together、um, in many different contexts. So it's a universal skill. The third thing would be academic engagement beyond the classroom. So, what we mean by this is engage activities that extend your academic interests beyond schoolwork. This can include participating in academic competitions, conducting independent research, attending summer programs, or joining academic clubs. So, these are all things that we cover when we have meetings with the students. We encourage them to try different activities. Um, including the Winmay Research Program, for example, we talk about the Winmay Volunteering Program, which they can com- complete and participate in during the summer. And in terms of academic clubs, we talk about honor societies and、um, also attending competitions as well. That's something that we advocate for. We have we actually have a file、uh, that's a competition. This is a compilation of many different types of activities. So that is something that we we push for students to to be a part of. The next thing would be community service and social impact. So what do we mean by that? That means demonstrating a commitment to community service, which will show empathy and a desire to make a difference. Choose service activities that you are passionate about, and where you can show a long term commitment. So 
We're talking about giving back to your community, keeping your community in mind, maybe problem solving in context of an issue in your community. Um, for example, if there's a lot of juvenile crime, let's say, you can maybe work on a passion project that deals with how juvenile justice is a little bit skewed compared to other groups and how they should have maybe different uh, reforms and programs to help you know juveniles uh, delinquents so that could be an example of how you can tie in your interest to the community the next thing would be uh, unique and specialized talents so if you have a unique talent or interest whether it's arts or sports technology or another area cultivate it so colleges value students who bring diverse talents to their campus so whether it's for example chess or dance archery anything that would be considered more on the unique side you know and it's also one of your passions then explore it develop it spend time on it because in that way you'll stand out again a little bit more uniqueness compared to other students everyone's going to be part of honor societies everyone's going to be involved in certain competitions like amc but it's the more unique things that help you stand out when it comes to extracurriculars. Um, the next thing would be work experience and internships. So this is a little bit more complicated uh, because of age requirements and stuff. So you need to make sure that you're even eligible to be able to get work experience and internships. So you wanna be gaining work experience or internships, especially related to your field of interest because this shows maturity, responsibility, and a proactive approach to your career. So you can, perhaps work, let's say, as a volunteer at a hospital, if you want to go into the medical field and you can start to know the ins and outs of what it's like for, you know, to have a career in a hospital. You can shadow a nurse, you can help out patients with basic tasks. The next thing would be cultural and global awareness. So this involves activities that demonstrate cultural awareness and a global perspective, such as language learning, study abroad programs, or involvement in international organizations. So these are things that can definitely be more highly regarded because you're showing that you're going beyond the scope of your community, but also thinking about things at a global level. And uh, sometimes that requires engineering and unique insight into those problems. Um, the next thing would be consistency and growth. So admissions officers look for consistency in your involvement and growth over time show how you have developed your skills, taken on more responsibility, and deepen your involvement in your activities. So this means that you could have started as a general member, but then you progress to maybe like a treasurer, a secretary, then a vice president, and then a president. It doesn't have to be a linear progression, let's say, but you should show some growth in terms of things that you're involved with over longer than, let's say, just a year or a semester. If it's something that you're involved with for a couple of years, Logically, it should be something that you grow with and you gain more responsibilities and duties. The next thing would be passion projects. So we mentioned this before, but passion projects would be engaging in a personal project that reflects your passions and interests, and that can be very impactful. So this could be writing a book, developing an app, creating art, or anything else that shows initiative and creativity. And then the last thing would be balance and well-roundedness. So while depth is important, admissions officers also appreciate well-rounded students, um, you know, who engage in a variety of activities that show you can balance different interests and responsibilities. And as a final recap of what we talked about when it comes to these factors, you want to be specific. You want to clearly describe your role, responsibilities, and the impact of your involvement. This, regard, this is in regards to how you present your activities. You want to show achievements. You want to highlight any awards, recognition, or significant accomplishments. You want to reflect on impact, explain what you learned from the experience and how it has shaped your goals and values. And you also want to connect to future goals. You want to demonstrate how your activities have prepared you for college and your future career. So that would be how we talk about extracurricular activities in the context of things that you can keep track of in terms of important factors but there is something that i wanted to show as a case study to see how are these things being incorporated so over here we have the excerpt from a student that got into harvard 
so we can look at their activities, their list, and see how they follow these principles. So one thing you're going to notice is that they have different types of activities. It's not all the same. The other thing you're going to notice is that the way they present their activities is also important. They presented their spike first, which would be RSI, so Research Science Institute. Notice that this is how much time they spend per week, so it's 99 hours per week, and they spent six weeks per year. So if you do the product of this, obviously we're talking about almost 600 hours of work here. So um, that's a lot of time. And you can talk about their positions and leaderships that they got. And uh, so they, that would be their spike. And then you can see how it goes down from there with, let's say, chemistry club being like the least important one at the bottom. So you have, um, if you look at the difference in time, so you started with 99 hours per week and then you went down to two hours per week. And in weeks per year, you started with six and then you went down to 36. But again, this product, two times 36 is gonna be smaller than 99 times six. So this would be the most impressive activity that they have. And so the way you present your activities is also gonna be important. And that's something that we've talked about. So now you know that when you're picking your activities, you wanna choose them in such a way that you have a spike and you start with that, your strongest activity, and then you go from there. So that's gonna be something to, to keep uh, track of, okay? And that's it for today. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you, Pierre 先生，今天给我们的分享，也感谢万博士跟我们的分享。大家有任何的问题呢，都可以直接来咨询我们的唯美集团。唯美集团是美国著名的大学申请及规划辅导机构，二十年规划经验，在美国洛杉矶、纽约、芝加哥等十二个城市设有服务中心，为广大华人子女提供教育服务。唯美集团专注于美国大学升学规划服务。教育学博士加常春藤名校面试官顾问团队，中美双顾问模式，为六到十二年级学生提供最好、最全方位的教育服务。欢迎大家扫码或者是直接搜索关注唯美集团的微信公众号“美国文美”，及时了解最新最全的美国升学资讯。如果想跟文美的客服互动，请在节目播出期间扫描屏幕左下角的文美客服二维码，或者直接搜索微信号“文美集团”的全拼音添加。文美的咨询热线是幺八八八七八九零九四二，感谢大家收看我们今天的节目，我们下期见。